this video, we're going to take a look at actor uh, blueprints and actor components. So that would be your uh, game object, your components, and your prefab in Unity. With that, we're going to start building some gameplay element that you can start using into your games. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do here is um, we are going to launch the editor. Just remember that the preferred way to launch the editor is through the um, code editor. So either you open the solution file if you're on um, Visual Studio, if you're in Writer, you can open the U project file and then you click the run button uh, or the start in uh, Visual Studio. So once we are here and we have the editor open, the thing we're going to look at today is actor. So let's um, start by creating a um, basic actor. So an empty actor. So let's go in basic here, actor. Uh, we're going to reset it and move it around here. Um, so here it is. An actor here represent a game object in Unity. It's the, um, it's the same concept. So an actor is something you can uh, spawn in the world. An actor comes with one thing, which is um, a default scene root. This would, um, it's, it's kind of a, it's a scene component and it gives us a transform. So um, one thing, um, if you have the actor here, you select it, you move it, you're gonna see that the transform of the scene object uh, moves also because it's the same property. It's what gives uh, the actor the transform. When you're uh, modifying here, you're modifying the scene root component. So uh, once we have that, the interesting thing about this is um, as you would have uh, with Unity, you can um, add component to this to give it more, um, more either functionality or just um, representation. So here, um, one of the things you usually want to do with um, an actor is add a mesh. So what we're going to do here is we have our actor selected. We're going to go into the detail panel. We can add new component to this actor. Here we can search static mesh. And then we're going to have here a static mesh component. So this is a component, a component attached to the root. Okay, so this is important because when you're in a C++, you're going to see this a lot. Um, so we have our de default root, which is at the position here. But if you notice here, this is at zero, 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 because this is relative to the position of the actor. So if I move, uh, let's say before, I'll, I'll put a static mesh here. Uh, let's put a cube. Um, let's go. So if I move here the static mesh, as you, as you would in a game object, it moves, but then it's offset from the parent. But the default, um, scene root is always um, at the at the actor level because this is the root of your object. This is the transform. So here uh, we're going to reset it because that's not really what I wanted to do. We're going to put that uh, one up and we are going to scale. What I want to scale is actually actually the mesh. So let's scale this down a little bit. If you want to be a little bit more granular, you have these snap snapping tool here um, that you can engage. Uh, mine is at 10 right now, but if you click here, you can go a little bit um, smaller if you want to be a little bit more granular. So maybe I want to, I want it to be uh, like this. So that this feels right to me. So the position is still zero, zero, but I've uh, changed the scale. Um, so I'm going to go here. Uh, now I have my uh, actor here, which is going to act as a platform. So let's rename it. Um, you can double, uh, you can um, go here, just uh, right click, edit, uh, rename, or you can uh, just use F2. Uh, I'm going to call it platform. Okay. So basically a static mesh here, um, uh, this mesh has already a uh, collider on it. Uh, it comes with uh, whenever you um, use the cube. So if we go here, we you can use this, this to browse to the actual mesh. Uh, and when you open a mesh in uh, in uh, Unreal here, you can um, add collision directly to it. So here um, I can show uh, the simple collision. So you see the green line here means that this is the simple collision. There's more, there's more. You can do complex collision, which means like the, the collision is gonna be more precise, but since it's a cube, like usually you're gonna use the simple collision. And this is gonna be some optimization, but we're not gonna go into that uh, right now. It's gonna be for later, but um, we're gonna, we're gonna get to it. So whenever you import your mesh, you can um, add some uh, different type, different level of collider, uh, depending on your object, depending on your needs. So um, right now this cube is the default cube, so we don't have to mess with it. It already has collision, which means if I do play here, I can jump on it and I can stand on it, no problem. 
So that's pretty cool. Now that platform has absolutely no functionality. It doesn't move. Um, it's also kind of, uh, it's, it's a little bit hard to work with because like it, there's, it's not a prefab. It's not like it, I, I could copy paste it around my level, but um, we all know from working <laughs> with Unity that prefabs are uh, the way to go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make this into a prefab. So to make this into a prefab, now that you already have it in the scene, um, you can't go, uh, you, you can't do the same thing uh, I, 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 with Unity with, and just drag and drop here. Um, they have another way of doing this. So um, yeah, I think I didn't mention it, but <laughs> Blueprint actually is the equivalent to a prefab in uh, Unity. So in Unreal Engine, it's called a Blueprint. It comes with lots more feature. We're going to see it right now. Um, but yeah, so what we want to do actually is uh, make that platform into a Blueprint. And the Blueprint is going to be a file here that we can drag and drop into, into um, any of our level. And it's going to have that share functionality that we're um, looking to have. So here, uh, the way to do this is here in the uh, content, we're going to create a new folder called Blueprints. Now, what you want to do to get that actor to that Blueprint folder is going to be here. It's going to say convert this actor into a reusable Blueprint class that can have script behavior. So here, and then it's going to ask you, uh, what's the subclass? Uh, we're going to say, we're going to keep new subclass. It's going to still be actor because that's, um, uh, that's the base class we want for now. We're going to rename it. The convention that is usually BP and then uh, platform, uh, BP for blueprint and then platform. And then we're going to change a folder because we want our uh, blueprint into a blueprint folder. Um, at some point, you can have more um, uh, more folder in there to uh, keep things organized. But since we have only one, we're going to put it at the root. And there we go. Now you're going to get this. The welcome to your first blueprint. Now. Um, with this, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go back here, and with this, just to uh, show you, now that I have that file, I can uh, put it everywhere in the level. So um, it's gonna share the same thing as a prefab. So it's gonna share functionality, variables, and everything. So uh, now that we have that, let's spend a little bit more time looking into the blueprint. Okay, so in this window here, um, which you, uh, if I close it, I can get by just double clicking my asset here, um, is a blueprint. So here in the details panel, you would have everything you would have seen in, um, in this window here. Um, so you can go through component, change values, you can change the material. Um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of things here that we're not gonna touch right now. In the viewport here, you have um, an, oh, a, a view of like, um, what your brief, what your um, your blueprint looks like. So um, now I have my mesh, so I can still like move it around and stuff like that. So um, it's pretty like it's all, it's almost the same thing. It's just at the level of a prefab. So a blueprint is a prefab. But what what's the super great thing that you have that comes with blueprint is these two tabs. And most this one is the the the, the best of the <laughs> of the two. So here you have visual scripting. So that means like, even if you don't know C++, you can still make games with Unreal Engine. Um, there, it, it is debatable, debatable like um, Blueprint has its cost in terms of uh, performance, but still, if you want to prototype something uh, or um, you're a designer and um, uh, programmer already have done kind of the functionality in C++ and exposed it into Blueprint, you can here prototype something very quickly. So let's say here, I, I have this platform and, um, Let's go uh, over here, okay? I'm gonna take that one, put it up here, okay? And I'd want my platform here, uh, which is my blueprint, uh, to go up there so that I can uh, go to this platform here, and then I'm gonna put these two also. Oh, it's four corner, in fact. Those two here, and then just a little bit closer. So I want to be able to jump on that platform, then go up and then reach that part. Okay. So in visual scripting, what, what you can do here is you have a couple of um, function that are um, called, it's um, really similar to the uh, mono behavior in um, Unity. So begin play is like your start function. Uh, event uh, begin overlap, we're not gonna uh, really touch this right now, but it's uh, for collision detection. And here you have your tick function, which is your update function in, um, in uh, Unity. So what we actually want to do right here is we're not going to go the overcomplicated route. We're going to start at the ground. And 
Um, by the way, if you want to start something at the ground, you can also press the end key and it's going to stick it at the zero position. The actor is going to be at zero on the Z axis for us, uh, since our origin is not really aligned with the, with the zero of the, with the underneath the platform, then uh, I'm going to put it a little bit up. Another thing is this thing right here is the player start. This is where your uh, player spawn. So for us, we're going to uh, make it spawn here so that we can uh, access the platform quickly. Uh, one thing is um, if you see this, oops, like this, bad size means uh, you're inside. So um, your player is going to spawn kind of inside the ground. So uh, let's put it up here and then we are fine. So if I play here, I'm right here. My platform is right there. So now what we want to do is in the update function, and right now we're going to do it in a super like uh, innocent way, we're going to want to make that platform go up. Okay, so uh, the way to do this is what we want is we right click here and we do get actor position uh, location location that gives us our self. So my BB platform our at, at current location and with blueprint, you can just uh, chain those nodes to uh, make it do whatever you want. So as I said, for prototyping, this is a super quick. So then I want to add add so I'm gonna do add here it's gonna give me this you can control click to get this because I want to place it um, here to make it look a little bit more uh, pretty and here we're gonna go in we're gonna say 0 0.5 um, so we're gonna go if, every time we tick we're gonna uh, up our location uh, on the z-axis from 0, 0 0.05 so now what we want to do now is set actor location there we go and uh, with that new location, we're going to plug it into the new location. And there it is. And now what we have is in, in seconds, we have a platform that goes up. Now that we have our basic platform, one thing we notice is it's pretty slow. So uh, whenever we, uh, pro we prototype, we usually want to have a lot of variables that we can play with to kind of get that feel um, that we want. So one thing we're going to do here is we're going to let uh, we're going to expose a variable that lets you change the speed. So in Blueprint here, what you would uh, do here is actually like uh, what we want to do here is influence this one. So it was at 0 0.0.5, 0 .5, but now I want to uh, uh, have control over it. So you can go here. You can right click on this and do split struck pin. And then it gives you is going to give you access to the individual component. And then we can do a variable here with the variable. The, the color matched it. So um, if it's green, it means uh, if you over it, it's going to say float and it wants a float. So it color codes it for you, which is pretty neat. And we're going to say speed. And what we want to do is we want to get the speed and plug it right here. So that means we can have different also um, uh, different uh, platform at different speed. Uh, one thing that is important is you need to uh, click here uh, for the um, where you can do uh, like this uh, to make it editable inside uh, the uh, editor. So per instance. So that's what it says, instance intensive um, uh, editable. Because otherwise you could say, um, I want to enforce the speed of the platform to be the same across all instance. But that's not really what we want. Uh, we want to have different. So let's say, so we're going to use this or you can use a little I here to make it a public, public variable. So if I come back here, um, you're going to see here a default speed. So here you can see all these categories. These are things that uh, we can uh, change by default. If you go into your variable, it's going to be in the default here. Um, uh, but you can change that. Um, you can go and say uh, movement. Movement of, uh, yeah, let's go with movement. Okay, so uh, let's go and compile here. And you're going to see that it's called now movement. Now. Uh, if we go at 0, 0 0.5, we're going to have the same uh, thing. So let's go, let's try 1.5 and let's play it. Okay, this is getting better. Let's go. And then we can jump here and then we can go and jump here. And then the platform is going to go um, infinite because we uh, kind of never stop the platform. But um, it's not a problem. Right now, I only wanted you to see how you can use blueprint and variables to kind of make some element of gameplay when you're prototyping.
And there it is for our introduction to actors and blueprints. So uh, with this video, you kind of start uh, to get the uh, little one-to-one -one comparison between a Unity and Unreal Engine and how you can start building gameplays element to make them into blueprints to reuse them across your levels. So if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.